With news being reported that Kendall Browse is going to remain at Arkansas as the OC and not take the Miami job, I want to take a few minutes and discuss what that means for Arkansas's offense, what that could potentially mean for KJ Jefferson, and maybe why he he decided to stay at Arkansas besides uh, besides the money. And so we're going to briefly talk about the improvements that Arkansas has been able to make offensively and the step forward that they could make in 2022 because of Browse staying here and because of what KJ Jefferson brings to uh, Kendall Browse's offense. And real quick, before we dive into that, uh, let's let's just talk about Browse real quick. So this is going to be his third year at Arkansas. And prior to uh, to Arkansas, he hadn't stayed anywhere longer than a year besides Baylor. So after the whole Baylor situation happened, went to uh, FAU for a year, then went to U of H for a year, then Florida State for a year, and then in 2020 came to Arkansas. So 2022 will be Browse's third year here. And so with KJ being are under browse for these past few years, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that the improvements are only going to continue, or at least potentially could uh, could, could continue to happen. So, uh, before we dive into to any more of kind of the the improvements from 2020 to 2021, what we could see from 2022, uh, we're not going to have any film breakdowns in this video. It's just going to be a few few minutes long, and then the the next video we're going to do with this I guess, series, if you want to call it, will actually be a pretty in detail dive that or break film breakdown of why KJ fits Browse's offense so well and why he had so much success in 2021. And so we're going to have a, a pretty decently, uh, kind of pretty decently, what, pretty decent film dive of K to Jefferson on the next video. So real quick, not real quick, let's go ahead and dive into to uh, the improvement from 2020 to 2021 under offensive coordinator uh, Kendall Browse. So the, the, the big things that stood out to me was the yards per game and the points per game. Those are kind of things that really stick out, right? So if the yards per game in 2020 was right under three, right over 391 yards per game, in 2021 it was 441, or a little over 441. So there's more than 50 yards improvements per game, and with that correlated, the, the, the points per game was more than five points per, per game. In 2020, they were averaging 25.7 points per game. In 2021, they averaged 30.9 points a game. So almost a, a touchdown better, which is which is. A, a huge testament to the improvements that was made. Because last in 2020, you saw life, you saw the offense take steps. In 2021, you saw a big step, right? Uh, other things that kind of stood out to me was the 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 rushing yards per game. It went from 151.3 to 227.8 in 2021. That's, that's better than 75 yards improvement of of. Uh, of yards on the ground per game, which is huge. And I'm gonna go, gonna go into a bit more detail of why that was. Another huge stat was the yards per attempt on the ground. In 2020, it was three. In 2021, it was five. That, that's, that's almost double, right? That, that, that's a huge amount there. The only places, only areas where they didn't improve was passing yards per game. In 2020, they were at 240. In 2021, they were at 213. Yards per attempt was actually a yard, almost a yard better in 2021. But if you just compared KJ's numbers to Felipe Franks' numbers, they were very similar. KJ was at 9.1 yards per attempt, and Felipe was at 8.9 yards per attempt. So kind of a misleading stat there. Um, so those are kind of the, the the big differences from 2020 to 2021. Also, one more thing I want to touch on before we talk about why I think KJ had such a big role in this and why I think he's a big factor in Kendall coming back is the, the third down percentage conversion. So in, in 2020, they were at 33.3. In 2021, they were at 36.9, so better than 3.5% uh, improvements, which again doesn't seem like a big deal, but if we this envision improvement continuing to happen it might not happen as big as the these 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 big yardage markers happen but if, if they improve just three to four percent uh on third down conversions that's damn near almost 40 or a little over 40 percent on third downs that's a huge a huge 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 thing right that's a huge thing to keep the offense on the field and keeping drives alive so i think looking at some incremental incremental excuse me i can't talk improvements um i think is also kind of a, a big factor that uh, with kind of coming back you could continue to see that because this is a kind of a stat that kind of goes kind of under un, unnoticed if you will so that would be almost a seven to eight percent improvement from 2020 to 2022 if they take that step so how this affects kj well it's year three of KJ learning from Kendall's offense, right? Last year being the first year he started, but in 2020, he was a backup to Felipe and still learned. I think KJ is a perfect fit for this offense. And again, we're not going to dive into the film quite yet, even though I'm kind of tempted to kind of um, kind of talk about it. Just know he's an outstanding fit. And a lot of the reasons why they had success was because of KJ and his ability 
as a passer, right? And I know yards per game were down a bit, but that's because he was such a good job throwing the ball that it opened so much opportunity on the ground and running the ball that they didn't need to throw the ball as much. I would argue that if he wasn't such a good passer, you you, you would probably see his yards per game more than Fleet Page was last year. It probably would be 240, 250. But he was such a good passer that it opened so much stuff on the ground because the defense had to be aware of KJ pushing the ball downfield. Over, again, over nine yards per attempt downfield, completes percentage at 67, uh, 21 touchdowns, four interceptions, didn't make a ton of mistakes either. And so um, with that being the case, the, the ground game opened up tremendously, right? So they, conti- they could continue to ground and pound. And KJ was a huge factor in the run game. He led Arkansas on the ground with rushing yards and with rushing touchdowns. He also had the longest run of any Arkansas player. He was tied with Burks with, with 49 yards, uh, on with a 49-yard rushing attempt. Almost butchered that, right? So uh, the offense went through KJ passing the ball and went through KJ running the ball. And so with this being KJ's first year as a starting quarterback uh, in, in the best division, the best conference in college football, I think it's, I, I don't want to assume, but with the improvements you saw from 2020 to 2021, I think you're going to see more improvements from 2021 to 2022 because KJ has another full off season as the guy, right? Like I, I, Yes, he was the guy last offseason, but there was still that kind of competition factor with Hornsby. He is now the certified guy. He is going to be a potential, he's going to be on the Heisman list, going to be going to be draft talk about him. And he has um, a year of experience, not to mention the year he had, right? Had a damn good year. It was a year of experience. And then you, you can combi- you combine that with Kendall Browles and how he was able to have that much improvement just with two years in Arkansas's offense. I think year three, you're only going to see more improvement. Now you're not going to see... 50 yards improvement per game or 75 yards improvement on the ground per game, right? But something like 15 to 20 or whatever it may be is big enough in itself. And as well as just the situational kind of awareness and, and, and what that means with the play caller, right? If you see that percentage of improvement on conversion on a third down, if you see the third down conversion percentage go up three or four percent, that's a big deal too, in my opinion, because that keeps drives alive, especially in these close games that, that Arkansas lost, like the Ole Miss, like Alabama, the games that are like right there, you know. So anyways, just wanted to make a quick video on the importance of Kendall Browse coming back, not just for KJ, but coming back um, for the whole offense. And, and you know, I think the reason, one of the reasons why he probably came back was because of the, the quarterback he has to work with in KJ. So again, sorry for talking so much, not much of a film breakdown or any uh, today, uh, but just wanted to, to kind of talk about the improvements that was made from 2020 to 2021 and how KJ was a huge part of that. And because he was such a good passer, they were able to get the ground game going because of threat of him pushing the ball deep. So next video we're going to do is going to be just a film dive on KJ and why he's so successful in K, uh, not KJ, in Kendall Browse's offense. So Again, that's all I show up today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you like any quarterback-related content, please consider subscribing, like the video, all that stuff. And people that have watched this channel before know that we are big KJ Jefferson fans, and so we just want to put a quick video out on the relationship, not relationship, but the, the factor of Kendall coming back and KJ still being there. So we'll see you next time on the film breakdown of KJ Jefferson and his fit in Browse's offense.